And we welcome you back to the pregame show. Glad you can join us from Terry High School. It's been a minute since we've been over here. Uh, we're talking with Coach Lacey a few moments ago, maybe the game of the week in the area. Of course, Terry is 3-0 and with wins over Raymond, Pure Academy, and Callaway, and they've outscored their opponents 112-18, to so we'll have to be on alert here tonight. But last week, what a come-from-behind win by this Gator team, and some historical notes here uh, individually, Ronnie Alexander and Henderson, and it was a, it was a lot to unpack in last week's game. Tale of two halves, a tale of one quarter in overtime as the Gators rallied to win a double overtime, 38 to 32, erasing a 12-point deficit. We're here with head coach Chris Lacey. Coach, uh, congratulations on the win, and where, where do you start? Where do you start in that one? Do you start with the fourth quarter? Do you start with the slow start? Where do you start in un unpacking a game like that? Yeah, you start with the slow start, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's it's something we had to get over that hurdle. I mean, we've been like that in the past where we come out, we start slow, and then we'll get hot in the second half, and we want to be a four-quarter football team. And it's like I've been saying all, all year, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a talent problem or anything like that. It's a football problem. And in the second half, they play football the way we have been accustomed to playing the past couple of years, and we got to find a way to get that going for four quarters, and we'll be good. So I was pleased with – the effort that they showed the whole game, especially in the second half, but we was a team in the second half. The slow starts, where you know, have you put your finger on that? Uh, I think I, I, I've been studying my kids. I've been observing them. And I think it's more of a getting out of – I talk about them getting out of their way. Well, I got to get out of mine and, and, and kind of figure out what it is that get them going. And, and they'll show me what it is. And I think this week I'm going to – put it on them and, and, and instead of doing it my way all the time, I'm going I'm to I'm come down to their level and see can we do it their way and see what's going to get them going before, before the football game mentally. Well, that was a heck of a game. I mean, it was some great individual efforts, some great individual catches. I mean, just, you know, playmakers, as they say, big time players make big time plays and big time games. Now, that's what a, a former college coach at Alcorn used to say. And so this was one of those games. Right. Um, and I mean, just clear situation. we practice those situations. Like I say, if anybody came to me and said, um, how do you feel about your team and situation of football, we practice that stuff. So, you know, they were comfortable doing it. It's just putting our foot on the gas and letting them guys play. Uh, like you say, big time players make big time plays. Um, I heard a coach say one time, um, it's not about the plays you run in clear situation, it's about the players. So don't think of plays, think of players. So at that point, we just put the ball in the playmaker's hand. And it, it starts with Ronnie Alexander, another 250-plus yard performance. Uh, another good effort for him. Tyler Henderson, second straight 100-yard uh, receiving game for him. And just some individual accolades. Henderson, ninth all-time in Warren County in terms of receiving, 1,298 yards. He had seven for 180 last week. Uh, Ronnie Alexander, ninth in Warren County uh, history in terms of five touchdown passes in a game. Last time that happened by Gator was Joe Johnson back in 2014. I don't know if you knew that, yeah. but a lot of good individual accolades coming out of last week. Well, people talk a lot about, like even in the past, people were speaking about us winning, running the wing tee and things of that nature. But for Tyler to be here three years starter and then end up doing that while being in a certain system that was run dominated, and things of that nature just let you know that people haven't been paying attention to the numbers, you know, over the past couple of years. Because, I mean, I think we threw the ball 26 times Friday. Um, and, and that's a lot for, you know, us in a while. But, I mean, when you got guys like that, you got to give them the ball. So those two kids work hard, and I got all the trust in the world in them. When you talk about Alexander, four touchdown passes in the game. The last time that was done, Michael Sweet back in 1973. Now, the record is five. A.J. Stamps with five touchdowns in 2011. So that's pretty good company. Yeah, I mean, Ronnie, like I, I, I said before, I, I go to war with Ronnie. He's a, he's a warrior. He's not the tallest guy, but I think we helped him out by allowing his skill set to work to the best of his ability. I mean, he had a couple yards rushing Friday, I think about 60 or so. So it was good to see that balance with Ronnie and, and just put him in situations where he could be successful. And, of course, the, the defense came up big, came up with a turnover, especially in overtime after you grabbed the lead. Um, and the youth, you know, the past couple of games, it was a youth thing. You know, guys in new spots trying to learn and get accustomed to playing on Friday nights. But that's the point of the non-district games. And I think they're starting to find themselves in jail. You know, I tell people all the time, this is the defense that I 
dominated at the middle school with and won a little six championship. So in my eyes, there's no reason for them not to carry that on to Friday night. What do you think was the turning point in that game last week after being down uh, 12 points? What kind of started the spark? What turned the game around? What one play do you remember that turned the game around? Um, I think we, I think Tata, I think uh, Tyler Henderson, um, just his, you know, we always, he's not a, a vocal guy. So the thing was, you know, how, how, what, what can help us win this game? At this point, let your playmakers do their job. And I think him and DeCore Knight um, and Ronnie um, doing their jobs and, and, and motivating everybody through their play forced the defense to have to want to play up to that standard also. And it ended up happening. I think, I can't remember what we went into halftime with, but they didn't really give up a lot in the second half. And then we did a better job of tackling. We tackled our butts off in the second half, which eliminated the big plays that were given in the first half. The struggles of Natchez throughout the season, and then the way they were slinging it all over the place in the first half, I'm like, what team were we looking at? What Gator team were we looking at? Man, we just had to make some, we had to make, I mean, it was just some adjustments that had to be made. And then, um, like I say, if, if one of our best players is a receiver, give him the football, let him work. So it would be crazy not to do that, you know, and just basically getting out of our own ways, coaches and letting those kids play football. You were saying during the week that uh, going back to the drawing board a little bit, you know, that, that, that you had to scrap a lot of stuff, or you just I had to retool some stuff or rethink some stuff. Yeah, we just had to, just had to go back and teach. It was just a teaching thing, and um, um, that's how the best teams are player led. So again, just putting the ball in the playmakers' hands and creating opportunities to where those guys' skill sets can allow us to be successful in football games. So it wasn't necessarily just throwing stuff away, but kind of just retooling and reteaching certain things that we have. Tell you what, that your defense really started to hit and, and make its presence felt in that second half. And, and it made me feel good. I mean, Demarcus Johnson took it upon himself to like control the huddle and control different things. Uh, he, he, he made me remember him. I remember back in the middle school, we playing a championship game. He was like, I, I was calling a play and he looked at me, he just was like, Coach, I got the play. He called his own play for the whole defense. He ended up making a play. And in overtime Friday, I was thinking of a play to call that last play. He looked at me. He was like, I got it. And he ended up making a play. So sometimes it's just what good, good players do. So I trust him enough to be able to do that. This, this game was all over social media. The, the congratulations, just the energy. It was just, it was just one of those exhausting games, one of those good old-fashioned uh, – they say slobber knuckled, head knockers, uh, offensive. You got offensive plays, defensive plays. So this this game had a little bit of everything. Yeah, I got I got older coaches on our roster who played at Vicksburg, and after the game, I made the joke to them. I was like, Hey, man, what did y'all do to these teams back in the day? To where every week they come and they give us they they best. I mean, we could be zero and ten, but when Vicksburg show up on the roster, people want to you know, outdo Vicksburg. So I was telling them in the headset, man, we coaching really hard tonight. So um, it was just one of them games, so it was fun. Yeah, it was a fun game. And when, when you look at uh, just all the playmakers, one guy that we didn't call, uh, Malik Montgomery, to talk about his status. Was, was he injured last week? Yeah, he good. He, he hurt his shoulder a little bit in the, um, in the game prior to this one. And um, I mean, we got enough backs and enough guys to where we can you know, let guys get some rest and get healed up so they're 100% healthy. So Blackmore had 100 yards Friday. So um, that's why I say we, we got guys that can take over and, and, and help out, you know, in the backfield that we have. So How much of this team is, is next man up mentality? You hear that every sport, every team sport is next man up, but it doesn't always equate. Is this team the next man up yeah, team in I which mean, you got – Ronnie goes down, you got quarterback, you got Malik goes down, you got Blackmore, you got so-and-so, Demarcus Johnson goes down. Is this this roster, next man up type roster? Most definitely. I mean, we didn't already played about 30 kids on defense this year already in the past three games that we done had. Um, offensively, we got, you know, guys who uh, played a good JV game the other night. Like, they ready for their opportunity in practice. Everybody get reps. It ain't a, these kids sitting over there just watching or anything like that. Like, if you at Vicksburg, Everybody gonna get meaningful reps that are gonna prepare them to be able to go out there and play a football game. So it is that type of mentality. We're talking with Vicksburg High Coach Chris Lacey as we get ready for Terry. All right, let's turn the page. A win like this, Coach Lacey can propel you. It's one of those defining wins. It's early in the season, but one of those, a win like that can, I'm sure the confidence level was pretty good this week knowing that, hey, it wasn't a great first half, but it's a four quarter, sometimes overtime game. 
Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, I mean, in speaking of Terry, I mean, we played him in a jamboree game or a spring game last year. It got rained out for the Lightning. Um, we ended up playing them. We invited them over in the summertime for joint practice. Met him at seven on seven. So we familiar. I'm familiar with Coach Digpen, a lot. Coach Coleman, a lot of those guys that coach there. And I mean, we want to win. We want to go out there. We want to try to dominate Terry. Like that's that's that is good opponent. Um, it's gonna be good game for our guys and I think it's our first actual tune-up going into you know homecoming and then getting that bye week in district so we need that them being three and oh is very motivating to go out there and play a team that's undefeated so we try to give them their first loss so um that's that's what we um looking forward to right now we were talking before we went on this may be one of the games of the week in the area uh, Brandon Shields who does a great job in covering high school football might be here so this game is getting a lot of attention, and so is Terry. They're 3-0. and They beat Raymond 39-0. They beat Pure Academy 35-0, and they beat Callaway 34-18. So you add it up, 112-18, they've outscored their opponents. What makes them so good? Uh, they, the quarterback, number one, um, big boy, six, got to be 6'3", six, 6'4", six, probably in the 200s, thick kid. Um, he can throw pretty well. Another big quarterback. Yeah, he's huge. Um, they got a physical offense. I think that's the they bread and butter to it. Um, they they very physical RPO game. You know they do a lot of different things that way. So it's a challenge because it's gonna be the week. Like I told the kids, it's gonna be a week where everything that's been our problem all season is what's going to win us the game this week if you do it the right way. So your eyes gotta be in the right spot. You gotta basically do your job in order to go win this game and be physical and tackle. So I mean they got big backs. Um, it's just a real good team. On um, defense, they fly around to the ball. Same like I said with Natchez. Natchez I said Natchez was going to be athletic. Natchez was going <laughs> to yeah. run to the ball. I told him. I saw it beforehand. And I know Terry is going to come out and try to give us their best shot they ever given. So it's going to be exciting. I, I go back to Natchez and I look at their quarterback slinging it. I'm like, where was this on film? Where was this the previous two games? We look at the numbers. You didn't see that. So, I mean, so it just shows you how you have to rise up and teams at home rise up and – as your team had to rise up last week. Right. Some people gonna give some people not gonna give you their best stuff if they don't have to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like Natchez came out and gave us their best stuff. Um and I just look at it from our perspective. If that was their best stuff and we still came back and won a football game, then what does our best stuff look like? So we gotta try to sustain that for four quarters and um that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm just waiting on our kids to lock in and show that for four. Yeah, what what was the one thing about your defense? last week because Natchez only had 31 yards rushing the previous week and they had some big plays as they stretched the field. It, 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 anything you had to tweak this, this week to kind of to kind of improve that? Tackling. Tackling and running to the football. It's just them two things right there. Athletically, we could go with anybody, but it's going to be running to the football and having that, that contact confidence to be able to hit people and, and get them on the ground. And I understand, I mean, like I said, we lost nine last year, nine guys who played three, two, three years as starters, and you breaking in a whole new group. I think I got like six sophomores on that defense right now. So it's just getting that confidence to be able to know, like, this is how we play football, and it's going to come. That's, that's what the game's for. They're getting better every week. I know we're a way better football team than we was the Red Carpet Bowl <laughs> up until now, so I got confidence that it's just going to continue to go and ride. Well, this is the second straight road game. If you can come in here in a very tough environment, and then it's homecoming next week, so if you get this, not saying homecoming is going to be easy, but what a confidence builder it would be if you can come in here in the Terry and get a win. Oh, I mean, I like to travel. I mean, I like playing at home, but it feels better when you go somewhere and the odds are stacked up against you, and then you can beat somebody at they – on stadium or whatever like that. So that's the excitement in going in there. And that's the chip you got to have on your shoulder. Um, and we got a lot of more important road games this year. So this will be one. To, I look at everything as an opportunity to help us get better going into them things. You know, we got to go to the show. We got to go to one central. Got to go to Columbus. So I think this is going to be a great tune up for that. Just like last week was when it came to our adversity and, and things of that nature. So every game teaches you something totally different. Coach, let's go get him. Yes, sir. That's Vicksburg High Coach Chris Lacey here on the pregame show. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back with the kickoff from Terry.